everyone. Well, it's really great to be back here at, at Cubicon once again. And today, in the limited time available, I thought we'd really touch upon just a few of the high points, I think, and give some directions where I think the, the world is going in terms of moving into this kind of multi-cloud world. So we all know, everybody here in this conference knows that cloud computing really has revolutionized the IT infrastructure. And that's where we look to now, not only for computing services, but almost everything we do in our, in our, in our life. And in fact, Cisco estimates there's gonna be something like four billion users on the internet in, in 2020. So this has been a phenomenal, you know, kind of change in our whole society. And as developers, we're the ones who are driving most of that change through use of APIs and abstractions and developing platforms such as Kubernetes. We are making it easier and easier to develop applications at a faster and faster rate. And that's having a huge impact in terms of the applications and services that we're developing today for use in tomorrow's future. So in many ways, I think this is all due to open source and to the fact that we can collaborate on a global scale. And in a sense, I think we've moved into this kind of golden age of software. And as, as simply as an example, if you look at the CNCF interactive landscape, you see the number of projects that are in open source and available today that you can start to use uh, for your own application. Look at GitHub, 95 million repositories, 31 million developers. This is operating at a scale never ever before seen. And we are all part of that. And, and I've been involved in open source for quite a while. I feel particularly proud of what we've been able to accomplish as a community, irrespective of corporate boundaries, what companies we work for, geographies, we work together on the things that matter to developers. Cisco does as well. In fact, Cisco has been involved in a number of open source, uh, contributing to a number of open source projects, including what we've done in OpenStack and Open Daylight and others, and, and big contributors into the foundations that, that support these communities as well. What's interesting, I think, we're seeing also that's changing in IT is now configuration and cabling becoming code. And this is because long, we're long past the day in which we have manual configurations, people going out into data centers, plugging and unplugging wires, or sitting there on a keyboard typing commands into a server or a switch. That's dangerous. That's how mistakes happen. Instead, when we canonicalize this and write it as code, check the code into repositories, we can then have repeatable processes, less error prone, and the resiliency that we need as we're operating at this much, much larger scale. And in fact, I think we're also seeing now new application development environments and platforms and paradigms are emerging. And here's just a few I wanted to highlight. So as you go about the different sessions today, you pay attention to these in particular. So first is service mesh, which I'll talk about, edge computing, and serverless. Tying this together also, now we're starting to apply machine learning and artificial intelligence, making these applications much more intelligent, and much more adaptive to the environment they find themselves in. So service meshes. Service meshes, most simply, are really about what happens when we've taken an application, we've broken things up into microservices, and we need to now have the services talk to each other again in a reliable way, in a trustful way, with security and metrics and telemetry and everything else. Istio is a prime example of that. And this is how we can now start to look at how we're taking a service mesh and expanding it beyond a single cluster into multiple clusters and over multiple clouds, because ultimately we're going to have to get to the edge as well. Computing is, you know, is moving to the edge. We also estimate there's gonna be something on the order of 25 billion devices connected to the internet in the next couple of years. These are devices that have unreliable connectivity. They're very, very resource constrained. They're very latency sensitive. The data center is just too far away and the speed of light is not changing. So we really have to be able to start thinking about how we push applications out to this broader edge, which is much, much larger than we're seeing in the internet today and be able to, to operate at this scale. So guess what guys, data flows back. We call it serverless now, functions as a service, but it's a way to describe an application as, a, as reacting to events and producing an action, and that we actually are abstracting away the location and the underlying infrastructure where these things happen. 
And as somebody who more than 30 years ago designed a computer that was designed for AI, massively parallel supercomputer with 65,000 processors, the long AI winter is finally over. And today we not only have the, the compute power, but we've got these huge data sets that we can use for training these systems. But AI is still very hard. So fortunately we have online training and everything else and, and examples of projects such as Duplo, which allows people to learn and use AI without becoming AI experts. So in the end, I think that what we're talking about here more than anything else is changing the way we think about development. We've got to move development from just the writing of the code, but instead to the consumption of services so we can start to assemble services based on highly scalable, proven services running in the cloud. So to see more about this, please visit Cisco in the showcase room and happy to have you. Thank you so much.